Amen. Destiny is calling, calling you. Destiny is waiting and waiting just for you. Your visions and your dreams shall soon come to pass. And defeat, it just won't last. Why? Because you have destiny on your life. Amen. For I know the thoughts that I have concerning you. Thoughts of peace and not evil to give you an expected end, a hopeful future. Amen. I would that you prosper and be in health even as your soul shall prosper. Amen. We thank God to know that destiny is calling you. God has a purpose and God has a plan for all our lives. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all of your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Amen. Your path of life may have brought you through many things, through many tears, through many dangers, through many tars and snares, but I want you to be encouraged to know today that all things work together to the good of them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose, for whom he did foreknew. God already knew the path that you were going to have to take, but a man whom he foreknew he predestined, amen. Moreover, whom he predestined, he called. Who he called, amen, he justified. Who he justified, he also glorified. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. We thank God to know that whatever you're going through is going to work to your good. Amen. What the devil meant for bad, but I'm so glad that God meant it for our good. We give honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen, who is our life, who is the way, the truth, and the life, who is the Savior of the world, who died, amen, that we all might have a right to the tree of life, who shed his blood for the remission of our sins, who went up a hill called Golgotha, gave his life as a ransom for many, laid his life down for the sheep, rose again the third day with all power in heaven and earth in his hand, came back on the day of Pentecost, amen, amen, praise the name of God to fill his people with his spirit, amen, and his spirit is here today, amen, praise the name of God, oh, amen, somebody sung a song, say, God's got a blessing for you, you can have it, just reach out and grab it, amen, while you're reaching for fame, while you're reaching for cars and land, amen, why don't you reach, amen, and just get this free gift of his spirit, amen, that God is raining down, amen, just as we speak in the last days, amen, God said he was going to pour out his spirit, upon who, upon all flesh, Amen. Upon your sons and your daughters, going to cause them to prophesy. Your old men to dream dreams. Your young men to see visions. Amen. Your handmaid. God want to pour out his spirit. Amen. On the last day, the great day of the feast. Amen. The Lord, amen, cried out with a loud voice. Amen. If anyone thirsts, let them come after me. Amen. Amen. We're, amen. Should be thirsty with all that's going on in this world. 
Amen. We're not safe anywhere, not in the church, not in the schools, not even in your home. Amen. Praise the name of God. We ought to save ourselves from this own toward generation. How do we do that? But by, amen, by giving ourselves over to the Lord and said, not our will, but let your will be done. How do I do that? Amen. Said, Lord, you are the potter. I am the clay. You make me, you mold me, you shape me, you have me what you want me to be. Amen. Give yourself to him. Amen. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies, this temple, as a living sacrifice. Only he can make it. Amen. Only he can mold it. There's no perfect vessel. There's no perfect person. There is a Savior. Amen. That come that we might have life and life more abundantly. There is a Savior who come. Amen. That we might have everlasting life. Eternal life. Joyous life. Peaceful life. And it comes through Jesus Christ. And for that we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. You've been so good. Think about it. How good God been to you. You've been so good. Mm -hmm. You've been so I just want to thank you, Lord. You ever been through a situation you didn't know how it was going to turn out? You didn't know how the circumstance would affect you? But you know what? He made a way. Made a way. Mm -hmm. You made a way, and I just want to thank, and I just want to thank, I just want to thank. You, Lord, thank you, Lord. He has made a way, been our friend, uh, that stick closer than a brother, that friend that loved us at all times, that friend that was born out of adversity for you and I, our Lord and our Savior. Jesus Christ. Amen. We thank God for Jesus Christ. And we thank God for you that have tuned in to this broadcast. We're grateful for you, to the Hale family, Sister Elizabeth Bush, to the Amen, to the Cooks, Amen, to the Swains, to all of you that tune into this broadcast. And if you desire prayer, just call that number that is under the bottom of your screen. We'd love to pray with you, pray for you, pray for you in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come with bowed heads, with humbled hearts, 
We come before you with thanksgiving, thanking you for your loving kindness, for your multitude of tender mercies. Thank you, Lord, for this day that you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad therein. We thank you for another opportunity to declare your truths, that the wages of sin is death, the gift of God is eternal life. <coughs> we renounce the hidden things of dishonesty. We confess our sins. Amen. You're faithful and you're just to forgive us our sin. And your blood of your son Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Thank you for the forgiveness of sins. Thank you, Lord, for the remission of sins. Thank you, Lord, for your blood. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit. Thank you for Jesus Christ. Thank you for dying. Thank you for rising. Thank you for filling us. We thank you right now. Thank you for looking those, looking beyond those and seeing their every need. Thanking you, Lord, for calling us out of darkness into this marvelous light. Thanking you all, every day, every hour, we give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen, and thank God. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 28, beginning at verse number 1. You will find these words recorded. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high, above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord God, God, thy God. Blessed shalt thou be in the city and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, the fruit of thy ground, the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way, and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses, and in all that thou settest thine hand unto. And he shall bless in thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee in holy people unto himself, as he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. Amen. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of the body, in the fruit of thy cattle, the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. I take context subject will be taking a man from verse number two. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Our subject is, amen, the benefits of doing what the Lord say do. Amen. A benefit is something gained or profited from something. And that's no greater benefit from doing something than doing something from, for the Lord. Amen. My mom, as a child, amen, would tell me to do things, and amen, and, 
at the end of it, amen, it was a benefit, amen, food on the table, amen, a, a, a warm house to live in. That was the benefit, amen. So when we do something, amen, uh, you will get a benefit. Amen. The Bible says, whatever you sow, that shall you also reap. Glory be God. Amen. So there's no greater benefit than the benefit, amen, from the Lord. We must understand that the Lord know our down-sitting. He know our uprising. He know our thoughts from afar. Amen. I, I might have pulled the wool over my mama's head a couple of times or the teacher's head or the coach's head. Amen. But there's one who, amen, sits high, look low. There's one whose eyes are in every place and he beholds the good and the evil. Amen. But I thank God it's a benefit Amen, that he has not dealt with us according to our iniquities. It's a benefit to know that he remembers that we are dust. It's a benefit that we are not consumed. Amen, because his mercies don't fail. It's a benefit that he looked beyond our faults and see our every need. But through the benefits, knowing that he's beneficial, amen, to serve God, amen, we ought to have a mindset to serve God. Joshua said, if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose ye this day who you will serve. Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It's a benefit, amen, to serve the Lord. It's a benefit to do what the Lord say do. I set before you a way of life and a way of death, a way of evil and a way of good, amen. Then he gives us the answer. It's a benefit, amen, for someone to give you the question and the answer, amen. I probably could have went to college and, and got a, a man a great degree amen if they gave me the question and the answer amen but we serve a God that gives us the question and the answer amen after he said amen amen uh, that set before you a way of life and a way of death a way of evil and a way of good he gives the answer and said choose life I stopped by WIL TV 47, located in the marble city of Sylacauga, Alabama, to tell somebody to choose life, choose to serve God. Amen. The Deuteronomy said it was going to come to pass. If you would hearken diligently, amen, praise the name of God. Oftentimes the teacher was talking. I could hear her, but I wasn't hearkening diligently. I wasn't really listening in. I wasn't really tuning in. There were times my mama said, amen, come in at a certain time. I heard her, but I wasn't hearkening diligently. And there are times that God speaks to us. We hear him, but we don't hearken diligently. Praise the name of God. But I hear God saying to you today, today if you will hear his voice, amen, you shrugged it off. You said and procrastinated and said, I'll do it later. But today if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. Today is the day of salvation. You don't know the day might be be your very last day on this earth. You're going to need to hear what the Spirit says to the church. You don't know, hallelujah, what you're going to wake up in the morning. But ye men, you need to hearken diligently to the voice of God. Amen. And save yourselves from this untoward generation. You may say, I got plenty of time. But I want to tell you today, amen, you don't know how much 
much time you got. You don't know what death is. You don't know where sickness lies. You don't know what situation will come about in your life. But if you hearken diligently to my voice, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. See, I wanted to do partial of the commandments of my mama. Partial commandments of what the teacher said do. Partial commandments, amen, of what the job say do. But I stopped by the day, amen, that God said to hearken diligently to all our commandments. Yeah, we love the houses and land. We love the cattle on a thousand hills. But I want to tell you, I've commanded you to love you one another. I've commanded you to love your enemies. I commanded you to love them that hate you. Bless them that curse you. Pray for them who despitefully use you. Yeah, but if you listen to me, if you hearken to me, you will in no wise lose your reward. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. I have not seen, ear have not heard, it has not entered in the heart of man what God has prepared for them that love him. What does he have prepared for me? Hallelujah. He has great things. I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory, to the glory, to the joy, to the peace, to the satisfaction. Yeah. The benefits of him. I bless you in the city. I bless you in the field. I bless you when you come in. I bless you when you go out. I bless you in your body. I bless you. I bless you whatever you set your hands to. Whatever, whenever the enemy comes in you one way, I make them flee before these seven ways. I make you plenteous in good. Bless you. We'll just strive to do what he says. Strive to enter the straight gate. He'll be there with you patiently. He's not slack concerning his promise. He's long-suffering. Not willing that any should perish. If you're having some struggles, be like you're doing a class. And ask the teacher to help you with this situation, to help you solve this problem, to help you to get the right answer. He'll do it. That's a benefit is his long suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Lord, I can't make it without you. I failed again. I'm here. I'm back again. He'll take you. Whoever comes to him, he said, I will in no wise cast you out. What are some of the benefits of doing what he said? A great benefit is everlasting life. That everlasting life doesn't, it's not the benefit of you did everything right, you dotted every I, you crossed every T, you stopped at every period, you put the commas in the right place, none of us have. The benefit is that God loves us so much. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave, freely gave, his only begotten Son, the benefit comes when you do what he said. And the benefit is not hard. Whoever believes on him should not perish. You don't have to perish if you believe on him. 
You will not perish if you believe on him. Whoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. What about this life? What about this time? What about these hard times? It's the thief that come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's no benefit in serving the thief. The benefit comes in serving the Lord. Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and life more abundantly. There's everlasting life. There is life and life more abundantly. That's peace. I'm talking about a peace that passes all understanding. A peace that passes all knowledge. Jesus said, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives. Not an Indian giver kind of peace. But I give you a peace that will stay with you through the storms of life, through hard times. I give you my peace. I leave it with you. That's everlasting life. That's life, life more abundantly. That's peace. That's even joy. Amen. From doing what he said. And you may have to cry along the way, but the anger of the Lord is but a moment. Weeping may endure a night, but joy comes in the morning. Benefits of doing what the Lord say do. Abide in me, my word in you. Do what I said, and you can ask what you will. And it shall be done. Ask. It shall be given. Seek. You shall find. And the door. Shall be open. Unto you. Don't you love those benefits? It's a great benefit in knowing him. If you don't know him. If you're unsure that you know him. Let's talk about it. Jesus said, let's reason together. Let's talk it over. May God bless you. May God keep you. Enjoy the benefits. Receive the benefits of doing what the Lord say do. And your purpose too.